Call us on your cell phone. Call the very hotline bling. That can only mean one thing. Oh, you got to love that track so much because it means it's time for the culinary hotline. Now, we usually have Zola answering all the questions, but today we've kind of made it a little bit different. We've got a, an entire panel of fantastic foodie brains for you to pick at. And so our lines are open on 083-913-3728. But firstly, let me introduce you to our panel. We've got Abigail Donnelly, food editor of Taste Magazine and Eat Out editor as well. Anal Portgieter, of course, our renowned food blogger. Great to have her here. And Caitlin Williams, current winner of the best blog in South Africa. Africa. Give it up, give it up. Yeah. Our fantastic yeah. ladies. That's amazing. Ladies, it's fantastic to have you here. Now, today's topic is going to be. Wait, quite let me the first introduce. I have to congratulate what? you since you're congratulating me. Oh. Safters. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Caitlin. I really appreciate it. Everybody that. needs you. to vote. I hope. Have you voted? SMS 5, 2, what's it? 33101. Well, you remember it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to today's topic. Now, the discussion is around unusual fruit and vegetables that you may have come across at a supermarket or at a fresh produce market. Now, have you ever been tempted to buy one of these weird looking fruits or vegetables, but you were just like, too scared and you don't even know what on earth you're about to do, it, to do with it? So, today we've gathered some very unusual looking stuff there. I've never. I think when I look at it, I can identify one that looks like a huge celery stick, stick and that's all. Uh, so it's not a celery stick. It's not even no. a celery stick. So, it's a pink one. So, so oh, foodies, okay. take us through what you've brought uh, here today. Okay, so um, some of these things are, they're a little unusual and you might see them every now and then. Um, the dragon fruit catches my eye immediately. I mean, it's pink, it's I'm beautiful. Yeah, that's the only bright colored one on the table. Right, and for me, dragon fruit is a little bit overrated, to be honest. I, that's how I feel. It's, I it's great in smoothies. Mm -hmm. It's great for if you put it in a fruit salad because it looks all fancy. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have a lot of flavor, right? Yeah. What I like to do with them is just freeze them. Oh, yeah. and then cut them in half and then scoop them out and it's like instant sorbet. Oh, that's such oh, a fantastic yeah. idea. It's a bit like a persimmon as well, Sharon yeah. fruit, which okay. is also nice. That's clever. Yeah. You know what, what I was, do you know how they grow these things? On big cactuses. Oh, really? and like they a prickly pear. Like a prickly pear on a cactus. Wow. And I love the name dragon fruit. I fall in love because it's got that leathery, <laughs> leathery skin and it's like scales, like a dragon scale. Yeah. Don't it's, you think so? It's yeah. really beautiful. In yeah. fact, if you had to sit on it color. for a period of 24 hours, it would hatch a dragon. That's why it's... <laughs> Like a, wait, and there's different what? varieties. Obviously, you get the one that is white inside with those yeah. spot, spots are beautiful. Yeah, like that. Oh, there we go. Does yes. that just yeah. all depend so on the region a, it's grown in? It's a variety, in. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, okay. Cambodia against Vietnam, I'm not, I'm not too sure. All right, but so yeah. dragon food, what else is there? But that green pawpaw, mm. that's my favorite. If oh you've my been goodness. to Thailand or not even been to Thailand, there's a beautiful green pawpaw salad with fish sauce and peanuts and green beans and fresh tomato called um, somtam. And it is it's beautiful. So if you can get hold of green pawpaw, um, Make and that also salad. That goes very well with the smoked fish. If you that Ooh. salad type yeah, of thing, yeah. if you have slivers of smoked fish in between, um, that is also delicious. And, yeah. prawns and then in lime, there. Yeah. lots mm. of lime. And I'm and trying to imagine the flavour profile as being somewhat bitter. Yes, no. No, no. It's, it's tart and it's like it's got the texture. It's quite chalky. It's mm. like it squeaks oh. when you eat. You know, <laughs> your, <laughs> your, <laughs> it squeaks in your mouth. It's, it's a fabulous <laughs> texture. What else do you have? One, one of, more. One of my favourite things is the quince. Oh, now, a quince is a strange thing. It's not the the normal run of the mill fruit because you can't just peel it and eat it and it's also this strange taste it's like that dry taste that yeah. acid, that tart taste but i think if you put it give it some love for a few hours in a pot with sugar mm. and i'll do it with a bit of ginger mm. and then i serve it star anise. yes oh, okay. with a bit of star anise mm. and it's perfect with a bit of cheese then you yeah. know a beautiful cheese and the Perfect. It's a real old forgotten vegetable. I tell you what, we're going to continue our chat about these weird and wonderful fruits and vegetables just in a second. So hold on to that, including one that uh, I've actually heard people using to warm up their voices. Rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. <laughs> Zoe, try that. Rhubarb, rhubarb, 